Hey everybody, it's Stippling Vaughn, and guess what? Today is the last day that I'm expecting to get any packages from any crowdfunding projects. And it is from Andy Smith's Cordraf. Now, the reason why it's coming in a big box like this is because I got the artist edition. So let's first take a look at this box. And you can see that the box is in good shape, okay? Uh, the reason why I always show the box is so that way Andy, in this case, can look and he can see that it arrived at Central PA and the box is in good shape. So that way he knows uh, what type of service he's getting from uh, the postal carrier he uses. So now that we've got that out of the way, we can start. Now I got this during the middle of the day, but I couldn't just do the video because I didn't have any bags of Doritos. And we'll get into that in a moment, but you're like, was it important that you have Doritos? I will get into it. If you watched my unboxing video for Billy Tucci, you know exactly what that means. But if you didn't, you're about to get yourself uh, a, a nice analogy of how I look at when it comes to crowdfunding and why when you're crowdfunding, you want to be Doritos. You don't want to be anybody else, like any of their competitors or more importantly, a local brand okay so we got the sides cut so i'm gonna put this in my lap okay popped it open now let's open this up okay now the first thing i'm seeing right off the bat is we've got it bubble wrapped good good sign okay cat's about to get pissed off because uh guess what we only need a box so, we've got it bubble wrapped. Oh, cat didn't even move. So, we've got it bubble wrapped. And what I'm really liking right here, okay, you can see through the bubble wrap. I got a letter from Andy, okay? That is really important. That's an extra touch. As I always put it, that's a little French kiss of a thank you from Andy. He didn't put it inside the book. He put it as a separate sheet to, to include with the package. Very nice. Thank you very much, Andy. Let's pull it out of the bubble wrap here. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> wrap the bubble wrap. And let's see here. Okay. So right there. And first of all, we got the whole thing is bagged. Okay. And you can see right here. Okay, you can see all the stuff there is in this bag. Let's see here. It says, uh, thank you so much. Dennis and I are incredibly grateful for your immense support of Cordrath, The Reckoning. We wanted to take a moment to express our heartfelt appreciation for your contribution to this project. It was a leap of faith for me because it's a departure from my usual superhero work. But we were excited to venture into it uncharted territory together this past year has been extreme uh, truly exceptional and i collaborated with dennis to develop cordraf and interact with all of you on platforms like youtube and other social media you our dedicated audience have played an instrumental role in bringing this project to life and we simply can't can't contain our excitement for you to experience Cordrath the Reckoning. If you would be so kind when you receive Cordrath, please post on social media telling the world all the best, your pals, Andy and Dennis. Well, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so let's see. Let's go. Let's, uh, let's, I'm not, I don't want to hear it. Let's pull and hear it. Okay. So let's just pull the whole thing out. Nice bag. So we're not going to throw that over our shoulder. Okay, so we've got the letter. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice. That'll be going into uh, the Artist Edition book. Okay? And then, okay, these are the custom old player, player cards. So let's get that. Okay, so we have... Cord wrath, and it is got the stats on it. Let's see here. Uh, 
proficiency five, strength. Whoa, you automatically got plus 10. Save is five and 20, dexterity. Okay, I'm, I haven't played it since uh, I was at the Kubert School back in the 90s. So uh, that stuff sounds impressive. But I don't know if it is or not, but we'll go with yes, it is. So we got Cord Wrath. We also have Ariana. Very nice. I believe these colors are done by, I think Dan Lawless did the colors for these. Very nice colors. Very nice. It's funny how like, when, 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 when Dan Wallace did Two-Fisted Manly Tales, I wasn't crazy about his, art, about his color work. But with this, I'm seeing it looks nice. And we got Lilith here. Very nice. Oh, the map. Very nice. Very nice a map. And we have the Nectar Knight. Nice, nice, nice. Now, one thing about this map is I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that this is relatively the size of the United States, okay? Um, with a lot of these maps, okay, even back when, like, Dragonlance and the Wheel of Time series, I never really got a sense of scale for these maps as to how big they were. It wasn't until somebody uh, posted a, a, a map of uh, Middle Earth from Lord of the Rings and then superimposed uh, the United States over it to get an idea of how large, it was, how, how big uh, Middle Earth is. And then seeing when I think somebody did like something showing you what the actual trip that Samwise and Frodo took. And I was like, wow, that was, it was, it gave you a much stronger sense of the journey that they had to take. So um, now I don't think it would be uh, feasible to then include like a lay, an overlay that will give you an idea, but I'm getting a gr broader sense of understanding of how big these maps of this world is uh, when they, they do these. So we've got the book itself. I got the Virgin cover. Okay, and then the back. Oh, wow, look at this. We've got two cards with, uh, you know, you scan that with your phone. What are the QVC codes? I don't know, but uh, not, not, eh, I'm not, I'm not a paper guy. Um, but we got them there. Oh, I know what this is. So that way you scan it, it takes them right to like this is their, their group, the Andy and Dennis show, and then this will be for Andy's show himself. That is. Again, okay, that type of promotion, okay, to self-promote, that way if you have somebody who backed you but isn't aware that you do YouTube shows, that's really smart. Very, very, okay, this is trying to expand your influence or to get, that way you can get people to who didn't watch your show before to watch it now. So very smart, guys, very smart. And then here we go, guys. We got the artist edition. Okay. Very, very nice. Very nice. Now, here's the thing is, I had joked when they did this one sh uh, YouTube short, and I'd said, I want mine without signatures. That way I can have them sign it. And he said, Contact me through Indiegogo. I forgot. So they're already signed. Very nice. But <clears throat> it just means that. When I see them, I'll have to remember to talk to them about it. But the reason why I ended up going not just with the book itself, but also getting the artist edition, was when he said that letter, okay, and he even admitted that his was a leap of faith and he was breaking away from the superhero stuff. It wasn't just breaking away from the superhero stuff. He was going with a completely new style, which um, I was surprised when he was going with this style and even doing... Uh, this genre um, when he had his cartoony style was I thought was was very impressive and I was going to see more of the cartoony style he proved me wrong with as the following this campaign as the cam cam campaign went on and as he uh, showed progress and here's another thing that he was really smart about doing his progress is 
he got to the point where he didn't want to give anything away, but he still wanted to show you progress. So he'd show you one panel of a page. So that way you could look at that one panel and get an idea and excitement of what's going on without learning any more of the story. I thought that was very smart. I would encourage a lot of, uh, when you're crowdfunding, do that throughout. The, you can, A, you're, you're doing two things. You're showing the you're showing your audience and specifically your backers that you're hard at work at what you're doing. You're showing them progress, but you're not giving away the story. Very, very important. And that's the reason why if you take a look at uh, uh, my uh, Saturday Stippling, uh, I'm sorry, my uh, Stippling Saturday and my Sunday Stippling videos from like early in the year and last year, you'll see that I was doing the same thing where I was showing you uh, the work or in the book that I'm working on for myself called Scat Investigators. And that way you give a sense of, under, of seeing the progress as you go along. Um, I've reached the point in the book where uh, I don't want to give anything away, and that's the reason why I've switched over that I'm doing like, these uh, pin-up pages. Uh, so, but no, this book, because Andy proved me wrong, I didn't want to just back, he proved me wrong, he proved me wrong and impressed me so much, I didn't want just the book itself, I wanted this, the artist edition. So I want to flip to a page in this, okay? So please give me a moment. Oh, wow, he goes, he ha he provides you with all the various covers he did. And I'll tell you, let me, there's one, ah, this is the page. This was one of the pages that completely and utterly sold it for me, okay? If you look, you can really see the variation of the ink lines. So it really is that artist edition, not just uh, a copy of it and uh, blacked out to, so it's you know, even. Okay, but this is the reason why I got, the, one of the reasons why he completely sold me. Okay, this page, when you look at it, okay, this reminds me of a George Perez fight page. Okay, and that was where it was. When I saw that and how, yeah, I mean, he has so much depth in it just from the everybody fighting. And he really pulled a lot into it. I am so... Okay. When you're crowdfunding, okay, I do understand you want to have like three to five pages ready for when you launch your campaign. But if it means that you need to skip into the middle of the book so you can provide... A splash page like this as one of your pages to show, to promote this book, this is what you do. Because this page with so much in it, and I mean, it reminds me of if you were watching Braveheart in the middle of the, one of the big field battles and you just hit pause, this is what you'd see. And, oh man, okay. Very nice, very nice, and has no lettering, so you can just focus on the story itself. And I'll tell you some, just from what I'm seeing here. Okay, we all know how Andy Smith's career, he's always been very tight, very tight lines, very tight pencils, nice, crisp, and clean. No, okay, I would say, if anything, this almost looks like it was inked by someone else else but andy's bones are there okay you can tell it's andy's style but it almost looks like someone else inked it and used his super tight pencils as a guide of how they would ink it so very impressive very impressive now why did i keep saying about doritos okay remember andy he said he went all out on this one OK, not only did he go on Indiegogo, but he also went on Kickstarter. OK, now here's the example I'm going to give you guys. This is a local brand of potato chip called Middlesworth Potato Chips. Very, very nice, good brand. OK, one of my favorite types of potato chips or brands of potato chips is this one right here. The only thing is you can only get it in the central PA area. And when I say the central PA area, I'm talking like, like Cumberland County, Perry County, maybe a little P 
parts of Dolphin County and parts of York County, okay? That's how narrow of a window of where you can get this potato chip, okay? This potato chip represents going on one crowdfunding platform, okay? One platform. You're limiting yourself with a list. Even if it's an extremely loyal audience or a loyal audience backer base, if you will, okay, you're still limiting yourself. This is Doritos. Did Doritos become Doritos by only selling through one retailer? No. You can get Doritos at any mini market, probably any gas station, any grocery store, or even like Target, Walmart, the big guys, okay? Domino, I'm sorry, Doritos became Doritos by making themselves available everywhere. That's what Andy's done. By getting on multiple platforms for multiple crowdfunding, that's what he's done. He's reaching out to as many people as possible. Because remember, you want to get as many backers as possible so you can order as many books, okay? When you go to a printer, and I know this from my personal ex experience when I go to get prints made of stuff, okay, I want 50 prints done, okay? It's going to cost you this much money. Okay, well, how much is it to to get it lower? Well, you got to order 500, okay? Well, what if I want, I don't have enough money to get 500 made. What if I just get, like, 485. Nope, it's still the same cost as if you just bought 50. Okay? You want to get yourself to that next layer. So Andy wanted to get himself to the point where instead of it, the book costing, let's say, the book costing $10, he wanted to get to the point where he'd get the book printed for $5. Okay? And now you do that is you get yourself in as many, uh, not just as many different social media platforms as you can, but also getting yourself onto as many platforms as possible. Because let's be honest, there's still that there's still that Coke versus Pepsi mentality. Okay. Coke is Kickstarter. Pepsi is Indiegogo. You've got your thing, you've got your your customers that are loyal to one platform or another. Do both. That way you're getting both of them. You might have more available to you in one platform versus the other, but remember, you want to hit as many people as possible, and you can't do that if you're re regulating yourself to one small area. By getting on as many platforms as possible, you, sir, have made yourself a Doritos man. So congratulations. I went into this almost as in-depth when I did Billy's because remember, Billy does both platforms. Andy's doing both platforms. So Andy, congratulations. You are a Doritos man. And I would say even with your current campaign of nice and tight, just throw it up there. Even if it's like for a 15 days on Kickstarter, get it up on Kickstarter. Who knows how many more backers you'll get. Even if you have like a look, it's just, I mean, you've, if you've got enough, if you've already set, if you've already met your goal through Indiegogo, to get it printed, even if just throw it on the Kickstarter for 15 days, you'll get more and that'll help you out and you'll get you'll be reaching a broader base because who are you? You're not Millsworth potato chips. You, sir, are Doritos. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm definitely going to be reading this. Instead of doing a specific review, one of the things I do for fun is after I'm done reading this is, ooh, we know where the pot, where, where the uh, bubble wrap went. <clears throat> you see here, this is where I put my, all of my crowdfunded books, okay? And as new crowdfund books comes in, some of these crowdfunded books comes out, either goes to the spinner rack or goes into a separate box, okay? But one of the things I do to find out if, how well this book was, not how I feel about it, whether the cat likes it. So let's... Pull this down. You can see here at the bottom here, we've got Grogan. Okay. I've posted pictures on Twitter of the cat lying in front of the rack. Therefore, the cat has approved of Grogan. 
So once I'm done with reading this, I will put this in the rack. And if she lies down in front of it, then it means it's a good, it's, it means it's a hit with a cat. It doesn't always happen. Cash grab, she wouldn't even go close to that rack. And she wouldn't go close to the rack for superiors either. When I like superiors, but she didn't like it. So guys, let's see if it passes the cat test. But until then, remember everybody, life is stressful. Just take it all one dot at a time.